Hey guys, Tarek Marifacer here, and welcome to the final part of the Navigraph series where we look at how to read these Navigraph charts. And we're going to look at SIDS. Okay, and I'm going to look at my favorite SID from, from Glasgow, which is the Perth for Bravo, I think it is, or is it for Alpha? This one here, because it's a ridiculously complicated SID and thus a lot of fun to fly raw data. Um, but SIDs are essentially the opposite of stars, not in the path, the paths are usually different, but in the sense that it's just departing the airfield. You take off and you depart and you follow a SID, a set route on departure. So ATC might tell you Perth 4 Alpha, Perth 4 Bravo departure, a Loman 3 Alpha, whatever it is. The point is it follows a very similar structure than the stars. So just like last time, header, nothing changes, and then we've got the top, which is information, so the frequency you're most likely to be given to after tower or approach, airport elevation, and then the information box again. And then here we've got the box for the uh, for the departures, and I said, like, like I said before, it can come in various forms with more or less details. Uh, I think for Glasgow, most of them are at the top or like this. So depending on the type of departure you're going to to do they'll have more or less uh, information so in this case it's maximum speed of 250 knots below flight level 100 less otherwise otherwise so not basically ikl rules yeah so here you've got the glasgow vor uh 25 nautical mile radius as demonstrated here and just like before, we have this. In this case, we have distances instead of uh, of latitudes, and then you've got longitudes here. Latitudes uh, are not in uh, here. They are latitudes are here. So the fifty six, and that's about it, really, except for the uh, the markings between them. And the longitudes here, and here you got some warnings. So no turns below five hundred thirty feet. And warning, do not climb above 6,000 feet until instructed by air traffic control. So these are things you do need to read, yes? Because, for example, if you're if you're doing a, uh, a, a let's say, VATSIM flight and Glasgow doesn't always have control, then, you know, at L-band, you should maintain 6,000 feet until you leave the controlled airspace. So once you're, uh, once you're doing that turn right here, for example, I am so popular right now, I feel so loved. Um, but yeah, and then here at this point, as you can see, there's like a dotted line here and it says not to scale. So this whole area here is not to scale. So this is a much longer leg than the rest of this stuff. Um, and the turn is not necessarily at the Glasgow VOR uh, radius. So important things to note. And and then we go here and we've got the average track mileage. So how many miles you're going to fly, so it would be still air miles to get to the different points of the Perth 4 Alpha will be 80 nautical miles to Elban, 68 nautical miles to Perth. And that's useful because it'll tell you, it'll, you can get an idea of how long it'll take you to complete these SIDs and you can use that into your calculations. Here in the box, it'll give you more information usually about, uh, about climb rates is typical. So these says require minimum climb gradients of 3.8 degrees for hours, I think it is, uh, the Perthful Alpha, there it is, uh, 3.8 degrees up to 2,100, then 5.75 up to 6,000 feet due to ATC and airspace restrictions, for quite a lot. And then they'll give you ground speeds and the vertical rates that you need to, to adhere to those limitations. So for example, for 5.75, with the nearest of ground speed of 100 knots, you need 600 feet per minute. Which is actually not too bad, really. Okay, so then you got the extra information, which is early turns. Aircraft which are not required by Air Drum Authority to adhere to noise preferential routes may be authorized by ATC to turn before Gzeton, right? Um, pilots are warned of high grounds to the north of the airfield. Aircraft departing from runway 23 should not turn east of Glasgow, radio 325, until above 1500 feet. So again, more useful information. And then this part, which is my favorite and what you should use, in my opinion, for briefing, yeah? 
So climb, so for example, for, for Alpha Runway 23, climb straight ahead, intercept to Glasgow Radio 227 to DME distance 4.7 gal, which is Zeton. Turn right, 047 degree track towards L band, cross Glasgow Radio 299 or at or above 2,500 feet, a maximum altitude of 6,000 feet. Uh, L band at 6,000 feet, intercept gal 342 at DME distance 7 gal, turn right, intercept Perth Radio 239 inbound at DME 20 gal, turn right. 080 track intercept Perth radio 236 inbound to Perth. Whew. That's why I love this SID because it's so complex. But yeah, so you can use this. And then every time you mention a an avid for the first time, you say set and identified. Um, and then you can also say when you would set the radials, for instance, the inbound the inbound legs. Okay. And then as we saw before, these are the MSAs. So with, within the Glasgow VOR and the Moor, Grid Moors, I believe they're called these. Uh, wow, blank again. So 5,400 feet. Uh, and there you go. So the reason I love this so much is because there's so many things you got to do at once. you got to reach Zeton, make that rate one turn onto 047, continue until you hit that, and then until you're outbound on 342 radio, uh, 342 radial, continue there until you're at distance 7 from Gao, then turn right onto 059. And then once you hit uh, distance 20 Gao, turn right onto 080, intercept the 056 inbound to Perth. So the, it's, it's a fun departure to do. And as well as always, that arrow shows the highest terrain in the area. For those of you who don't know, this is Loch Lomond, which is a really beautiful lake, definitely worth visiting if you go to Scotland. Uh, and that's it. Again, I don't have to explain as many things to you as last time because you know these things. Yeah, you're. We've looked at this in the first in the first video, second video rather, and you're familiar with all this. So, good luck using these charts. If you want, I will make a video as of an example brief you could do using these charts if you're flying solo uh, on your simulator. Uh, they're good fun. Uh, briefing is really good as well. Really primes all that information, makes your life a lot easier once you're actually doing the departure. But that's another short video. Thank you for watching. As always, if you liked, please share and subscribe. Comment if you have any questions. I do read uh, the comments even if I don't necessarily always answer to them. And uh, make sure if you do have a question to comment it so that I can then answer the question either by responding directly to the comment or if I think it warrants it by making a video about it so you don't know your question could be featured in the video. But that's it for this video. I'm Tarek Face. I'll see you guys next time and happy flying.